Hi everybody, it's Philip here from QPC, and today we're going to talk about how to handle sound inside of AppCelerator's new Titanium Studio. And before we get to coding, let's talk about some of the ways to handle sound. So this will be quick. You want to skip it? Go ahead. So we're going to talk about the three main scenarios. I need a sound as a background music. I need a sound as a button click. And I need to handle sound inside of an event listener. So very first thing that we're going to do is talk about how do I create a background sound. So let's do var main window equals ti.ui.createWindow. And there we go. And what we're going to do from here is we're going to set the background color. Background color is white. And let's set the title to just because we're that way. Sound test. Okay. So we can do this a few ways. The traditional way is creating a sound object that we can reference anywhere in our application that's within the same context. And so let's do that. Let's call it music backing. Var music backing equals ti media create sound. And that's how we create that sound. So it's ti.media.createSound. And so the URL refers to where it's located. In this case, we're going to reference long.wave. So we'll just type that in long.wave. As it's in the same directory as our running application, we don't have to specify a directory here. And then we'll say preload true. Now, be careful with preload. If you're targeting newer systems that have a lot of memory, preload can be OK if it's a small sound. If it's a large sound file, you may not want to preload it. You may just want to wait for the system to, to load it when the user presses play. That helps manage your system resources a little bit easier. But so that's what we have right now. And so we're not playing it right now. We just created a music backing variable, and that's it. So now we do main window.open, and we're done. Okay. We don't need to add this to the window simply because it's there. There's no reason to add it. It's not a view. It's not a control. It's just something that we're going to play. So what happens if we run this? OK, so here we go. Here's our window. Oh, no, you lied. You said there's sound. No, 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 no. I didn't lie. Just remember, we haven't got there yet. We have a window. That's all we've created. And we opened our window. We created a sound variable, but we never used it. So there we go. So how do we actually play this? Now, we could say, since it's background sound, we could come up here and add one more, looping true. And background looping will actually continually play this. When it stops, it'll start it again. So what we want to do is music backing.play. Now, when we open our window, it should play. And voila, we have a window, and we have sound playing. This method is definitive. In other words, we have an object, and we're controlling this object. Let's close out of that. There's nothing wrong with doing this method. This works just fine. But let's say that your application is rather long. You have a lot of views. You have a lot of controls. You have a lot of windows. And you have several different contexts that you're working with. Creating an individual music backing object can be lost in the shuffle of all the other variables and objects that you're working with. So while this is still technically correct, it's not a really great way of handling this. So let's talk about a really good way of handling this instead. When the main window opens, we want to do something. So let's say the main window opens, we want to play a sound. So what can we do? Well, believe it or not, we can take our little object here, and we can add it to the window. Huh? thought we already did that. Well, no, we can add it as a property of the window. JavaScript is loosely typed, so we can add our own custom property. So let's say BG sound. And here we go. Voila. So there's our BG sound. It's still the same information that we had before, but in this time, it is loaded onto the main window. We no longer have music backing. If we try to run this, it'll fail. Music backing doesn't exist. So how do we play it? Well, main window.bgsound.play. See how easy that was? And any time that we still have an instance of main window, that will continue to be there. We can still access BG sound. So long as main window never is actually disposed of, we still have access to BG sound. So that's a great way of doing it. So do you think this will work? What happens if we play this? Oh, ho, ho, we have sound. So it did work just fine. All right, so let's say that now we have our background sound music playing. How do we stop it? Well, let's add another item in here. We'll just add a plain ordinary view. All right. We'll do var button view equals ti.ui.createLabel. And yes, it's not a button. I'm just lying. It's a label. But that's OK. This is just an example. We don't have to be totally specific. We'll say top 30 width auto height auto text 
stop. All right, now I'll stop BG music. There we go. All right, so we have our button. Now let's add an event listener, and let's do that. So we'll do button view dot add event listener, and let's do click, and let's do this function e. We'll do main window bg sound dot stop. There we go. Main window add button view. Now we should have our view, right? Oh no, because I spelled it wrong. B U T T O N Philip. There we go. See, you always have to watch what you do when you're coding in text. Slightest little change can make you look silly. All right, so there we go. Stop BG music is there. What happens when I click on it? Hey, look, background music is stopped. So as we can see, what this tells us is that regardless of anywhere in the application, as long as I'm within the same context, if I reference the main object and then the child object on top of it, I can control it. So in this case, the main object is the main window, the child object is BG sound, which is a custom property with a new object attached to it, and I can control it to tell it to stop. So those are the answers to the question. How do I create a sound? How do I manipulate that sound? And how do I change that sound inside of an event listener? Great. So that's one way to do it. But let's be a little bit more specific about how we can make this work to our advantage. So let's delete all of this. We'll leave main window.open in here because we want to open our main window. Instead, let's create a scenario where we have a short sound and a long sound. And we only want to play those sounds when the toggle buttons are true. Okay? Short sound, long sound, only want to play them when the toggle buttons are true. If the toggle buttons are false, we'll pause the sound. Make it as simple as that. So what's the very first thing we need? Well, let's say we need a short view and a long view. The short view has a short view label and a switch. The long view has a long view label and a switch. Okay, so we know we need to create six things. So let's create the short view first. Var short view equals ti.ui.create view. Let's create the short view at the top. So let's say top is 20. And we're doing 20 because on an iPhone we won't want to cover that status bar at the top. And we'll say width is auto. We'll say height is 50%. Okay, there we go. So there's our view. Short view. Top is 20, width is auto, height is 50%. We don't have to specify width being auto because if we don't, it's going to be auto anyway, but I'm a little pragmatic. I like to have that in there. So the next thing we're going to do is a short label, var short label. It's E-L, not L-E. T-I.U-I.create label. Okay. We're going to add our label to our view. So in this case, we want the top to be zero. Okay, because it's going to be in the view. The view already starts at 20, and I don't want to add any more to that. So it's going to be right at the top. So then we're going to say width equals auto, height equals auto, and text equals oops, text equals short sound. Okay. So there's our short label. And now let's create our short switch. Var short switch equals tie.ui.create switch. All right, there we go. I want the switch to start below the label. So we'll say top is going to be equal to 35. All right, and we'll say value is equal to false. Now this is a pro tip for you. Always set your value. Even in Android, it's not required because Android, the switches start with a default value of false. But on iOS, the switches don't have a default value to start with. So always set the value. Just get into the habit of doing it so you don't run into that. And we'll come down here and say width is equal to auto, height is equal to auto, and last but not least, our custom property. Remember, I said if the switch changes to true or on, I want to play my sound. So I need a sound. Sound is timedia.createSound. URL is going to be, in this case, short.wave. See, this is a short sound, so I want a short sound. Short.wave. Preload true. Because it's small, I'm going to preload it. All right? And that's all we have for our short switch. That is literally it. So, believe it or not, we can do the same thing for our long view. Just have to change a few things. We'll change short to long in all of these. And don't forget to change it in the text. And don't forget to change it for the file. All right. So long view is there. Let's change the long view to be at the bottom, though. We don't want it to overlay what we have at the top. So short will be at the top. 
long will be at the bottom, and this should work, other than a brief spelling error, S-O-U-N-D, <laughs> S-O-U-N-D. So that should work. Do short view dot add short label short view dot add uh, short switch and long view dot add long label long view dot add long switch and then in the controllers down here main window dot add short view main window dot add long view. Okay. All right, so I'm going to put those at the bottom of my file because, to me, controllers always go last. And now we're going to add our events. Remember what I said. When the switch is turned on, I want sound to play. When it's turned off, I don't. So let's do that. So short switch dot add event listener. It's change, by the way. Whenever you change the value of a switch, it happens for uh, checkboxes too, radio buttons, stuff like that. Whenever you change the value, it's going to say change. And then we're going to say function. Could I call a built-in function? Yes, I could. But this is a little bit easier because we don't have to specify the built-in function right here. We can make it more generic and we don't have to worry about constantly writing the same amount of code over and over again. So function e, and we'll do that. And we'll do the same thing here for long switch dot add event listener change function e. Oops. Okay, what's right? And so what am I going to put inside of my function? Well, I could reference my long and short switches, but why bother? Because whenever the short switch triggers, it knows where it triggered from. It triggered from short switch. So why would I reference short switch inside of short switch? Ooh, that's a tongue twister. So instead, I'm going to tell it to do something specific. I'm going to say handle sound e.source e.value. Well, Philip, what is handle sound and e.source and e.value? Well, handle sound doesn't exist right now. We're going to create that in a second. Bear with me. E dot source. Well, here's E. Okay. There's E. What is E? Hmm. Well, we use E as saying the object. So the object and its source is E dot source. The object and its value is E dot value. Well, what is the object when change triggers? Well, it's what triggered, what changed in this case. So the short switch is going to refer to that. So E dot source is short switch e dot value is what changed on the short switch. We changed from true or false. So e dot value will be true or false. Okay? And so let's do it down here as well. Handle sound e dot source e dot value. Done. And then we will come over here and write our handle sound routine. Var handle sound is going to be equal to a function of our choice. So what are we actually settling to the handle sound function? Well, we're sending e dot source and e dot value. Well, e dot source is the control, and e dot value is what changed. So we need to say control and value. Okay. And now, if the value true, why well, write that when we can just say if value? So if the value is true, I want to play. Else, I don't want to play. Okay. So if it's true. Let's take the control and the sound and play it. See how I did that? Control.sound.play. It's the same thing as saying short switch.sound.play. Like we talked about before, how you can reference that custom property. But because we're using this single function right here for multiple switches, I'm going to say control.sound.play because in my event listener, I'm sending the source control to the, to the function. And now down here, we're going to say control.sound.pause, okay? And so there we go. That's all there is to it. So now we have a short view, we have a long view, we have our event listeners, we've added them, and we're going to open. Here's a rule of thumb. Whenever you write something long and complex like this, if it goes right the first time, chances are you screwed up. So don't be surprised if you see an error here. Okay. So let's come down here so you can see how this works. So right now we have two lovely little switches right here, short sound and long sound. What happens if I press on this toggled uh, short sound here? Now, hey, we get a sound that plays. What happens if I turn it off? The sound stops. What happens if I turn it on? Turn off, okay? And that is that event listener down here. Whenever I turn it on, it's going to send the source control, which is in this case, the short switch right here, and then the value of what I did. So if I do this, it sent 
the short switch and true to our handle function, and since it's true, it's going to play. Same thing for long. So I'm going to do this, and now we're playing long. Can we do them both at the same time? Sure, why not? They're individual sounds, so let's do that. Lock. Can I pause one and play the other? Absolutely. Can I pause them both? Yep. Can I play them both? Yep. Either way you decide to handle it is going to work. So that's basically how you handle sound. So again, to recap, you can handle it as individual objects, or you can attach it as an object to another object. And that's, this is the method I prefer. If I want to add a sound to a button, for example, I'll just include it on there. And then I'll just do um, long switch dot sound to control it. All right, so that's all we have for today. And if you have any questions, post in comments below. Any suggestions for future videos, let me know. And feel free to subscribe. You have a great day.